Hello everyone and welcome to a game I was uh, trying to show for a very long time but never actually got around to do it and I feel like now is the perfect time to uh, show this game. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Judith Polgar from the 2012 uh, Quadrangular Unum uh, tournament in Mexico City. It's a rapid event uh, but also a blindfold event because it, uh, first they play a rapid game then they play a blindfold game and if the result is a tie uh, then they play two blitz games. So it's a weird event but uh, you know the, the, the games that resulted from the tournament are very nice and it's a four player uh, tournament uh, Magnus Carlsen, Lazaro Brazon, uh, Judith Polgar and Manuel Leon Hoyos uh, four, so four of them will be playing and both uh, Judith and Magnus won their uh, won their first match so here they face each other in the finals and this is the uh, the first game of their matchup so we're gonna check out the game and then I'm gonna show you well or rather you can first read the article which is in the description below first thing you will see uh, I saw the article when I was still in the hospital preparing for my for my heart valve surgery and I read the article and I thought okay when I get back home when I get better I'm gonna do a, a video regarding this as it seems like a very interesting point of view uh, on the entire situation of men and women in the world of chess so uh, if you want to check out the article it's a very short article I recommend you read it it'll take you like three minutes uh, first thing you see in the description below if you want to check it out before watching the video but you can also do it afterwards uh, so we're, we're gonna get back to that now getting back to this game uh, Magnus has the white pieces so this is the first game this is the uh, rapid game and then after this game they played the the blindfold game Magnus got the, the white pieces in the rapid game and he opened with knight to f3 so Magnus starts off with a reti opening and knight to f6 sorry about that uh, we have c4 by Magnus uh, and now comes g6 uh, we have knight to c3 and bishop to g7 uh, and now e4 grabbing more space in the center we have d6 and d4 so transposing into the king's indian defense uh, we have castles by Judith and now h3 today most popular is bishop to e2 but h3 still uh, incredibly popular today we have e5 uh, all standard king's indian stuff and now while you could trade here and offer offer a queen trade let's say bishop g5 now offer a, a, a queen trade uh, which is definitely possible uh, here we have d5 by Magnus declining the trade and it's considered the best here uh, and here knight to a6 uh, that like I said this is a game from 2012 uh, nowadays uh, well not a4 but a5 is is the most popular idea uh, but okay knight to a6 the knight is now coming to c5 also preventing white from uh, expanding with b4 to, to take away the c5 square uh, from the black knight uh, we have bishop to e3 by Magnus and now queen to e8 somewhat uh, rarer move today most popular is knight to h5 making room for this f uh, f5 pawn uh, but in those days uh, Judith decides for queen to e8 and here we have g4 uh, g4 uh, well uh, uh, defending against some very, very tricky lines because uh, you, you have to keep an eye on the f5 square for example if you just continue developing let's say you prepare the castle there are some ideas like knight captures captures an f5 you sacrifice a pawn uh, a piece to create a, a very strong attack here so Magnus not interested in this especially as it's a rapid game uh, goes for g4 now takes away the f5 square uh, from black and here knight to c5 now the knight uh, enters here and it's still uh, well uh, it's still very early uh, for white to play b4 as the e4 pawn is now hanging so you have to deal with that first uh, we have knight to d2 magnus adds another defender to the e4 pawn and now a5 Judith does not allow b4 and now the knight is nicely cemented on c5 uh, if magnus wants to get rid of it he's gonna have to play bishop captures which is not the the greatest idea as this bishop uh will be very much needed uh, white placed all of his pawns uh, in front of the king on the uh, light squares and he has a dark square bishop this uh, dragon guarding the king so white will definitely need his dark square bishop uh, and all of his pawns are on light squares so you, you don't want to be stuck with a light square bishop here so bishop to e2 and now as everything is uh, nicely placed you decides to strike in the center with c6 attacking d5 uh, and here uh, there is uh, there is a game where uh, this position has been reached in, in modern chess where it's known that h4 is the best move uh, and it's a really it's a really tricky position but in those days such things were not known for example here if you go for bishop captures on g4 uh, it's just uh, perfectly fine for white you you can accept it and you don't really care about this knight to d3 check because after the king moves and let's say knight captures on b2 you can go queen b3 and the knight is trapped not much for black to hope for here 
So uh, such things that were not known then. Uh, Magnus goes for rook to g1. And like I said, it's a rapid game. It's not a classical game. Uh, and uh, it is as of move 12 that this position has never been reached again. So let's see how this uh, unique game continues. We have king to h8. Judith makes room for the for the knight on g8. So uh, she can bust open the position with f5. We have h4 by Magnus now. And knight to g8. Retreating with the knight and queen c5. Adding more uh, pressure. Uh, well, more defense defense to the, to the f5 square. Uh, we have bishop to d7, continuing development, and Magnus castles queen side now. Uh, we have captures on d5 once, and knight captures on d5. We have knight to e6, now Judith can shift her knight over to d4, or uh, f4 if needed, and Magnus continues with h5. He wants to bust open the position, so Judith of course defends this, and the knight here allows that. So g5, the knight uh, now nicely defends the g5 pawn, and now a nice prophylactic king b1, as you never know uh, what might be lurking behind the corner. And here, bishop to a4 by Judith, putting pressure on Carlsen's queen. Uh, we have b3, just defending, and now bishop back to c6. And here, uh, Magnus has a few moves to decide uh, what to play. Like, a4 is an idea to completely uh, prevent any counterplay from black on the queen side. h6 is, a, is an idea you could sacrifice a pawn uh, to open up the h-file, use the h-file for the attack. Uh, however, Magnus goes for the very, very cool knight to b6. He says, okay, I'm attacking your rook, what are you going to do? Uh, well, of course, Judith moves it, and now comes queen to c3. Magnus is just going after the pawn. He says, I'm going to grab the pawn, I'm going to play a4, and my position is going to be excellent. Uh, and okay, Judith says, uh, you can have your pawn, I'm going to try and, uh, you know, uh, mix it up, as it's a rapid game, uh, I like attacking, who knows what, what might happen. So here, attacking Carlsen's bishop, bishop back to f1, and now h6. Judith, uh, a great attacker herself, understands the dangers of allowing white to sacrifice this pawn with h6. So now Magnus just calmly grabs the pawn, queen captures on, f, uh, on a5, and we have f5. Finally, the move happens, but now, uh, now it's a pawn sacrifice, and you're already down a pawn, so what's happening here? Well, point is, if you go e captures on f5, then uh, Judith can just go knight f6, and this is a very close position. Your pawns are not going anywhere. You're not going to be able to attack here, and it's probably black who will be faster in busting, busting open the position. And at some point, even if this happens, this bishop comes alive, could be very dangerous for Magnus. So instead, after this f5 idea, uh, we have g captures by Magnus. Uh, now, uh, this, is a, this is a very strong pass pawn, and now the, the G file is semi-open, so we could we could use that. And also, uh, you have to be wary of this uh, queen captures on h5 idea. Uh, so here, queen captures on h5 is played, but Magnus says that's perfectly fine. Yes, you're attacking, not that, uh, but my rook here, rook to e1, and knight to f6 now, putting pressure on the e4 pawn. So here, we have knight to d5, not allowing the... the uh, pawn to be attacked twice uh, and also is just a beautiful monster knight on d5 so if Judith wants to get rid of it uh, she has to give up uh, the uh, either the bishop or the knight but Magnus will only improve his pawn structure here so here rook to a8 first attacking Carlsen's queen queen back to b4 now attacking the pawn here and rook f to d8 and here uh, like I said, it, it's a very, very complicated position, especially for a rapid game. Uh, you have to decide uh, what to do here. There are plenty of ideas. A4, always a useful, useful move, move for Magnus. You could go for knight captures on F4. You could go for knight captures on F6. Uh, all very, very prominent moves. However, Magnus decides to improve his position a little bit more before deciding on any... Uh, such rash decisions. However, this is uh, one improvement uh, too many, as after this f3 move, his position is completely lost. Uh, but it's not easy to spot why it's completely lost. However, it's enough for Judith in a rapid game to spot it. To spot it. So uh, feel free to pause the video here and, uh, well, uh, win this game for Judith uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wonderful idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to h4. And uh, I, it's, it's a super weird looking move. And if you're wondering, 
Uh, yeah, okay, the rook is under attack, but after the rook moves, what, what happens now? Uh, well, that's kind of the point. And here, the strongest is knight captures, just get, uh, getting rid of this, or even knight, this knight captures. Uh, however, you place bishop captures on d5, and this allows Magnus to go to go for the in-between bishop captures on f4, which would slow down the attack. However, Magnus goes for the uh, for the main idea of the capture fest on d5, so c captures on d5, and now Judith's idea comes alive. Knight captures on d5, and this was the point. It was actually a double attack. The queen was attacking the rook on e1, but also x-raying uh, Carlson's queen here on b4. So now if the knight is captured, uh, just queen Queen captures a uh, queen and uh, of course Magnus loses a queen. So the problem is uh, now Carlsen's both uh, both his queen and his bishop are under attack so he needs to figure something out but it's impossible to defend the bishop. All of the squares uh, from where you can defend the bishop are taken either by the knight or, or by the pawn. So Magnus does the only thing he can he has to give up a piece. Bishop captures on g5 at least now maybe uh, he, he can still continue the game and the uh, point is that if pawn captures then queen captures on b7 white's position is pretty great the knight is still under attack if the bishop moves you have to worry about rook to h1 the king and queen are still in the same file however you did goes queen captures on g5 now attacking carlson's rook so now his queen and his rook are hanging and there is not much you can do here the queen still has no access to the dark squares to keep an eye on the rook so you have to trade here and this is exactly what magnus does we have rook captures on g5 knight captures on b4 grabbing the queen uh, Carlson's rook still under attack has to go back and now you did not even bothering with rook captures on a2 uh, Bust open the position with d5. She wants to get her uh, rook into the game as uh, You know activity above all so Magnus trades here with e captures on d5 knight f captures on d5 and now knight to e4 uh, An excellent square for the knight. Maybe, maybe some f6 ideas will be possible in the future so knight to e3 attacking uh, Carlson's rook and the bishop here and here uh, we have f6 by Magnus hoping for knight captures rook because then you get this uh, uh, bishop capture with check and you get two pieces for the rook. However, you did not inter interested just bishop back to f8 and now rook to h2. Uh, Magnus saves the rook, so rook a to c8, now offering to trade off a pair of rooks, and Magnus blocks it with bishop to c4. Uh, here we have knight captures on c4. It's a very dangerous bishop. Uh, he, uh, the bishop could help uh, with the defense of the pawn on f7, and you, you might have to worry about a, a, a lot of different stuff here. So Judith uh, is up material. She simply trades knight captures on c4. We have b captures and the king to g8 now. Uh, we have rook to b2 going after the knight here, and now a rook to c7. Uh, not going after the knight as the bishop still guards the uh, the bishop still guards the knight uh, just remaneuvering now the knight cannot move as the pawn with hang but now rook to c7 uh, preparing to double up uh, rooks on the d file uh, we have c5 now the uh, pawn is nicely protected by uh, the knight and by the rook here uh, and also now the bishop no longer guards the knight so here knight back to d3 attacking the two rooks uh, and now well you could save it with rook to g1 check uh, Magnus finds the very interesting rook to d2. Now if you trade, uh, of course, rook captures, rook is coming. So rook c to d7 as planned, and then now comes c6. Again, busting open the position, uh, hoping, to, hoping to get some trades here. However, just b captures on c6, rook captures on c6, and now king to f7, blocking the, the pass pawn. Uh, we have rook to b6, and now comes knight to c5, uh, tr offering to trade off everything. The rook is nicely nicely defended. There's the uh, offer of a knight trade, so you have to trade something. Here, Magnus trades on d7, captures with check, rook captures, and the knight back to f2. Uh, but now h5 by Judith. And it's very, very hard to play this. Uh, you're down. Uh, you're down a piece. This uh, unit has this extra bishop here. Even though Magnus is up a pawn and it could be a very strong passed a pawn, but it's incredibly hard to play this. So rook to c6, attacking the knight, and now just rook to d2. Judith says, okay, you capture my knight, I'm going to capture your knight. So knight to h3, defending, and now knight to e6, also defending the knight. Uh, and here we have a4 by Magnus. But now, uh, feel free to pause the video for the final time and win the game for Judith in the quickest and simplest possible way uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting how to trap the knight. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to h2. 
Uh, and here there is uh, nothing more, nothing more to be done here. And uh, I believe it was uh, in this position that uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. Uh, and yes, that, that is true. I just had to check. Uh, but yeah, it was in this position that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game uh, because there is nothing to do. The knight is lost. Uh, if you try something like knight to g1, then not rook h1 because uh, rook to c1 can defend the knight, but actually uh, bishop to c5. And now there's nothing more to be done. Uh, the knight has nowhere to go all of these squares are taken and uh, even if you try something like a5 yes it seems like you can push your fast pawn but just captures a6 and the, the a7 square is covered by the bishop so there is absolutely no counterplay here uh so yeah after this uh not that but after the rook h2 move magnus carlsen resigned the game and the game one of this uh, uh finals uh, uh tournament uh, in mexico city goes to judith polgar uh, the entire event end, ended by Magnus Carlsen winning it because Magnus retaliated in the second round, uh, which is the blindfold game, and then they went into uh, tie breaks where two blitz games were played and Magnus won both, uh, both blitz games. Uh, but uh, this is uh, Judith's uh, win she got against Magnus and it's quite quite the win. And like I said, this game was played in, in 2012, which is uh, long after uh, Judith's prime, uh, but uh, still, uh, wh what a victory against Magnus Carlsen. And in 2012, uh, Magnus w was a beast. In 2013, as you all know, he won the Candidates Tournament and he faced Vishwanathan Anand for the title of world champion. And of course, he became world champion. So in two 2012, Magnus was an absolute beast. So uh, this is what I mean. And uh, like I said, uh, I, I want you to check out the article and then uh, you could comment just on the game. But if you're interested in the article and this idea of are, are, are women still in 2020 uh, worse than men in chess? Uh, well, uh, Professor Wei Yi Ma uh, from the New York University has something very interested, uh, interesting to say about this, uh, so do check it out. First thing you see in the description below, read it. It'll take like three minutes and then come back and comment uh, wh whether you agree with him. And uh, especially if you, if you uh, understand statistics, then you could also sh shed some light on his, uh, uh, well, statistics uh, usage although uh, as he's a professor at NYU I imagine he uh, he does it quite well uh, but here I also wanted to show you uh, this is uh, Carlson's uh, uh, record against Judith Polgar in their uh, entire career so in classical games Magnus Carlson defeated Judith Polgar 2 to 0 with one raw so no wins for Judith in classical and including rapid and exhibition games Magnus Carlson defeated Judith Polgar 11 to 1 with five draws so this is the game we've shown is the only game Judith won against Magnus uh, but don't uh, you know don't uh, uh, be mistaken or anything this is uh, there are plenty of men with far worse uh, score against Magnus Carlsen so this is not uh, any any sort of a point of metric uh, system or anything it's just uh, you know Ma Magnus is an anomaly he's like he's like Neo there's uh, it's pretty silly to compare him he's pro he's not probably he is the the greatest chess player who ever lived uh, so uh, it's it's always very very hard to compare to him and to his uh, well rating and uh, j just playing skill in general. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, wh what I wanted to show you. What a what a wonderful game! And here is uh, just so you get a bit of a sense because today you have I think uh, Ho Yifan is the only player I think uh, who is uh, well not only. Uh, in the top 100 i think humpy conero is also in, in the top 100 regarding women or i could be wrong but i think it's either just ho yifan or humpy conero also uh, but here is the uh top 100 players of july 2005 uh, like i said when judith was in her prime so you can see it's uh, uh first rank uh gary kasparov then vishwanathan anand then veselin topalov uh, peter leko uh vasily ivanchuk uh, vladimir kramnik peter Sviller, and number eight in the world uh that's uh, regarding men and the women both so this is uh, the uh the, the uh, actual top 100 players is Judith Polgar uh, in front of some incredibly strong names like uh, Etienne Bacro, uh, Levon Aronian, Boris Gelfand, Alexander Grishuk, Michael Adams, Alexander Morozevich, Alexander Shirov, Alexei Shirov and the list goes on so this is only the top 15 so this is by far uh the best ranking ever achieved by any uh, any woman player and it's uh, I mean not number 8 in the world that's uh, simply incredible However, it was uh, never never reached uh, before or, or again. So Judith is sort of a sort of an anomaly uh, 
uh, herself in chess. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, just what I wanted to mention. And like I said, I was in, in the hospital reading this article and I thought you, you guys might be interested in this. So do check it out. Uh, first thing in the description below, uh, very, very, very short article. And then uh, you can comment on how, how do you like it, where you think it's a, uh, it's a, a good article. Is, is there some uh, points that are maybe not valid in the article? Do, uh, you know, sh share your comments. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was uh, quite quite the beating Magnus took, even though he won the event afterwards. But this game is just beautiful with the black pieces beating uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen. Uh, in, in those days, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, but yeah, uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Jabri Fahed, uh, Adelan Shangoli, uh, Adam Kelly, uh, SKS Tax and Accounting Services, and Marcus Severi for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. And do read the article.